Welcome back, one and all. When we last left our code, we were working on object pickup. And um, uh, just as a refresher on create, we stopped the animation. We picked a random pickup. We set the image index to match that. We then set our type to nothing. And then based on which of the pickups we did, we either added to points, health, lives, and then we had this else mystery. We had more pickups other than this. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this out and we're going to create the remaining if checks to set what type it is. Now I'm going to just do that right now and come back and just talk about what I did and then we'll deal with what happens when the player collides if it happens to be one of those other settings. Before I do, never I just want to remind you to never underestimate the power of copy and paste. Which, by the way, I'm doing it with my mouse, but honestly, control V is the paste. And so the cool thing about this is that if I paste this multiple times, all I have to do is go and change the numbers and change the type. So I just wanted to let you know that this is a great way to sort of speed up your production. Copy and paste. Control C to copy. Control V, as in Victor, to paste. Okay, we're back, and this is what I coded after lives. We had damage, we had death, we had transport, we had speed, and then finally it's mystery. And um, before I go ahead and say that this is, in fact, what it is, I'm going to take a screen capture and compare our, our frames to just double-check to make sure that's right. So to verify this for damage, we're saying it needs to be 17 uh, to 19 to be damaged. So I go to sprites. And I go to the sprite pickups, and I want to see frames 17 to 20, whatever I said. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, here I am. Damage. Frame 18, remember this is zero based, and they make it one base, which is so bizarre. It's like, we're going to be doing this in code. 18 is really 17. I don't know why they don't do it. 17, 18, 19 would be our damage. So that's 17, 18, 19. We go to the object pickup. Uh, greater than 16, less than 20. Yep, we got our damage. Death should be the next two. So that's going to be 20 and 21. So we go back here and we verify that. So that would be 20. 21 is death. The next three are transport. So it's going to be greater than uh, 21. And it's going to be less than 25. Let's see if we got that one right. Yep, that's transport. And then the last one, uh, the second to last is speed. That's frame 25. So that'd be the penultimate frame. It says 26, 25. And the last one is mystery. All right, let's code this thing. Okay, so we've got all of our types set up right. Um, so now what we have is in our collision. And I love this because it's just one, it's one collision with our player. And we got just so much power here. And as I said, never underestimate the power of copy and paste. Control C, Control V. Other type, uh, yeah, damage. And by the way, did you notice how I copied it to begin with? I clicked at the end of one line, so line 15, see the blinking cursor, and I went all the way down here, and I did Control C. And the reason why I did that is I can just Control V when I'm at the end, and it actually includes that line return. Damage, death, I think transport. Um, speed, right? And then finally, else. And I'm going to put a little comment here. Randomly choose the fate of the player. All right, we'll have to deal with that random in just a moment. But let's just verify our variables. Uh, that's damage, death, transport, speed. Go back here. Damage, death, transport, speed. Great. Okay, we'll go back to our object player. We're back here. Now we get to determine what happens on each one. Now, we already did damage. So damage is going to be some form of hurting of health. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a random variable and we're going to put var damage equals and we're going to just do the i random, no, i random range. And let's have our health take a hit anywhere from, say, 20 to 70. Let's 
could be bad. Oh. And then we're going to take the P health and we're going to subtract that damage. So that'd be minus equals damage. Bam. There we go. All right. Then death lives. This is great. We had a plus equals one. We're going to do a minus equals one. I'm going to test that one out. Um, the other thing we might want to do is toggle a breakpoint and uh, put some breakpoints in each of these and just play around to see what's happening. Now, transport is a fun one because we get to deal with rooms. All right. So now um, one of the things with transport is the other um, has a, an image index and it could be one of several. So let's take a look at what those could be. So I'm going to go back to my create code of the pickup and find the transport one because this tells us what the random pickup actually happens to be. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put a little comment in here to help determine what happens. Remember what I said, the first transport was going to take you to the very first room. Um, the last transport uh, would take you to restart the room, and then the middle one will um, basically take you to the next room. So we're going to put that little comment there, and uh, so we're going to put a little if check. So now I'm going to check to see what the random pickup happens to be. And so it's other dot random pickup is equal to 22. Okay, what are we going to do? All right, that's the one where we're going to send back to the first room. Now, uh, be careful. This is the first playing room. So this is a little bit of a challenge because if we end up adding a splash page, like a, a beginning game page, we don't want to actually go to that room. So this is where we have to be careful about how we name our rooms. So if you look here, we have a room zero and a room one. So I'm thinking what we want to do is just go to room zero. Uh, we're going to have to add some damage in room one, and we'll probably want to add at least another room so that this we can actually test all of this out. But for now, let's just go ahead and let's just send it to the first room, which is room zero. Okay, so what you want to do is it's room go to, and then we're going to give it the value of the first room, which is room, oops, not foom, room zero. Right. We're going to have to test this one out. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, I think we toggled a breakpoint. Let's just toggle it. Yep, we had one already toggled. So we're going to run this in debug, and then I'm going to change where the breakpoint happens to be. Okay, so the breakpoint is set right at the very beginning when we do collision with the pickup. So I'm going to remove it from there, and I am uh, going to check right here. So this will be fun. I'm going to stop debugger and I'm going to restart it. And now we have to go through and cycle through until we hit that room. So we're going to have to do a lot of uh, a lot of resetting here. Yeah, what we you know what I think what I'm going to do is test this out a little bit differently. We're going to fake it out. On the object pickup create, we're going to set it to the specific value of 22. So when we said image index equals random pickup, or when it says random pickup here, we're just going to replace that with 22 to begin with. So I'm going to put 22, and then I'm going to comment out the other piece there by putting a little double slash. So I can bring this back by removing that. So let's go ahead and run it and test it out. And it should restart this room. And then I'm going to want to go to the next room. Yeah, so that restarted. So that works. So let's go to the next room. Oh, wait. I needed to... Hold on a second. I need to add a door so I can test out going to the next room. So I'm going to get the object door and drop it right there. And let's run it one more time. Get my pickup. Test it out. Now go here. I'm in the other room. Okay, so I have to add it to the other room. So let's go to room zero. I'm going to bring in that object pickup and drop it right there. And run it again. So the idea here is if we're in room one, will it take us back? Yes, that worked. See that? Takes us back. Cool. All 
All right, so we've already tested out that that works. Let's go ahead and make yet a third room. So I'm just gonna duplicate room uh, one and we'll call it room two. And we'll go in there, we'll add a couple blocks, some walls in there, and oh, we have it. So we have that pickup here, that's room two. We need to put something in here to sort of change it up to let us know that we're in there. So I'm gonna click on the object wall and I'm gonna do some deleting. I want to make sure that you can see that we are going into another room. I'm going to hit delete and then I'm going to paint in the wall just so we can tell we're in another room here. There we go. Alright, one more time. Let's see if we can go. Oh wait, we need, a, we need a door to get into that other room. So testing this stuff out can be a lot of fun, can't it? All right, so we've got another object door. We'll stick this one up here, run it, go to room two, or room one, and then the other one. See how we're in another room, and transport takes us all the way back to the first room. So the transport works, and see how I tested it? I had to, add, I had to have all these other rooms in here. Of course, we're going to want to rename this one to room two. And <laughs> it doesn't like it. Let's do a rename. Huh, doesn't want to change it. Maybe you have to be in another room? I don't know, maybe it's because I, uh, no, I'm not running it. All right, well, whatever. Uh, we'll deal with renaming it in a moment. But as you can see in the object pickup, uh, when we set it, if we want to test out a particular one, we just hard code it in. And when we're done, we just get rid of that. All right, so we've tested that one out. Actually, let's go ahead and test out 23, and we're going to have to set that as well. So we're going to go back to the object player, and we already checked if it's transport, and it's the first one. And we're going to check, we're going to do an else if other.random pickup is equal to uh, 23. And then we're going to go go to next room if it exists. All right. So if I think we can do a not a room last. If not room last, this tells us are we in their last room or not. Then we're going to go to room next. Sorry, it's room go to next. If not the room last, room go to next room. And I believe we need a closing curly bracket here. So if you use indentation, that makes it easier to see. Oh, I was missing a closing curly bracket here because there was this big gap of nothingness. And I indent carefully. And so there we go. So let's go ahead and test this one out. We'll go ahead and run it. And so we should be going into the next room when we collide with it. It should look like the next sign when we run it. And it looks like collision event with object pickup line 34, unknown function or script room last. Um, oh, not room last. See how that was green? That means it's not a good one. So I'm going to change the code in here. And that's room next room. Room go to next. Let's just test this out, see if I got that one right. If not, we'll go look at our other rooms. So the transport exit should take me to the next room, takes me to the next room. Now I click here, it goes away, there is no next. All right, one thing we may want to do is never set it to room 23 if we're in the last room, because the create event is triggered when we get into that room. Uh, for now, we're just going to leave that. We're just going to do an else, and it's going to be a room restart. Room restart. So if it's none of those, it, there's only three. So we have three options. Is it 22? If so, go to the next room. 
Then we check to see, is it 23? If so, uh, I'm sorry, if it's the first one, 22, we go to the first room. If it's 23, we go to the next room. And then if it's not either of those, that's the else, then we just restart the room. And there's the code for transport. So this brings us to speed. And this is where it gets kind of fun. So we have this variable type and we're set it to speed and we need to find a way to speed up our character. In order to do that, we're gonna now have to make a variable for the speed of the player. We're gonna call it velocity. Now, velocity needs to be set on create. Anytime you have a variable you wanna use, you set it on create. And okay, so here we've got some drag and drop. And at this point, I could make an execute code, but that's a lot of extra space for just a simple, simple idea here. We're just going to declare a variable, drop it in here, and we're going to call it velocity or output velocity. There's all these other types of velocity, but not here. Okay, so now in the case of our key down, let's see how fast we're going on left. Uh, we're set a speed of four. Okay, so on create, we'll set the velocity to four. Okay, and the idea here is that on the pickup, if it happens to be a um, speed item, then we're going to temporarily speed up the character. So we're going to go to our object player. We're going to go, oh, we were there all along. Collision with the object pickup. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're just going to put speed equals, actually I could put a, oh, wait, that's not right. Actually it is right, isn't it? Oh, let's go find out. Uh, I think speed is built in. Oh, velocity. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and set it to six. I don't know if that's the speed we want, but we're going to test that out. Now, the only problem is we need to change uh, and use this velocity variable every time we move the character. So, no key means they're stopped, so there's no point in doing it. We'll do key down left. And speed, you know, that's animation speed. Um, all right, so set sprite, set direction, set speed. Oh, there it is. Here, we'll set it to velocity. Okay. And we got to do the same thing for up. So you see what we're doing. Make sure it's not animation speed because that'll mess things up. Set speed, velocity. So we have to go in and let's just copy that right now. Control C to copy. And we'll go to right, double click, set speed to velocity, down. Set, not animation, but set speed to velocity. Okay, so now the speed is set at velocity. When we collide with the speed pickup, uh, velocity changes. The last thing we want to do, though, is we want to um, speed up velo velocity. That's acceleration, by the way. <laughs> For, I don't know, five seconds? So then what we have to do here is we're just going to set alarm set, alarm set, and then uh, we're going to set a new alarm. I know we've done zero at some point on one of the objects. I know we did one on another, so we're just going to play it safe. We're going to set alarm number two, and the count we're going to do five seconds, so five times 30, 150. And then now when alarm two goes off, we're going to set velocity back to four. So now, uh, actually, we could have looked to see what alarms we have. We actually didn't have any alarms on our player. Uh, but at this point, let's just go ahead. We set alarm 2. So when alarm 2 goes off, we're going to take the variable of velocity, and we're going to set it to 4. Okay, so you get the idea. We, we have to go in on create, set a new variable called velocity, and then when we collide with the speed object, we're going to speed it up and set an alarm. And so when the alarm goes off, we'll reset that velocity back to four. All right, so object pickup. Now, the last thing we want to do is we want to, uh, we want to test this for a speed up variable. So what we have to do to test that is to do what we did before. 
Let's go to the sprite for the pickup and figure out where the speed one is. So that is current frame. So we need to set it to 25. So we go back to the uh, object pickup. And on create, we're going to set this to 25. And let's test it out. So I want to move around a little bit before I hit the speed up. There's my speed. Doo, doo, doo. And now here's my speed. So I've started a new room. Can you tell I've speeded up? Let's make it more extreme just to see if we can get that to work. Let's set it to 8. And now we're going to really speed things up. See how much faster I can move through here? I want to see if that power up stops after a time. Ah! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Five seconds, four, three, oh, see I'm slower now. And now I'm faster. All right, we got it. Speed works. Okay, so that, you know, we, we basically it's not speed, it's velocity. We needed a variable other than speed that we could change and set. So now we can move this around. We can even slow stuff down. And now we can do all kinds of stuff with speed. The last thing that we haven't done, and I'm like out of time, is the idea of randomly choosing the fate of the player. Uh, now, there is a lot of different ways we can do it. My recommendation, I'm going to put a little pseudo code here, and I'm going to put a to do, and I'm not going to show you how to do it. I'm just going to put a little comment in here, and I'm going to make this a multi line comment. And then we got to make sure we end. Like so. To do. Okay. So randomly. Okay. Now, how many different objects do we have? Speed. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I would pick a random set of variable to a random number between one and seven. Okay. And then from that random number, I would, you know, put a, for example, if, so you notice if statement, if, you know, rand number, I would even set a variable, call it mystery. And then if mystery equals one, Okay, add health or whatever. If mystery equals two, etc. So, so basically, you generate a random number, check to see what that number is, and based on what the number is, do one of those things. Okay, and you already saw how to add health. You already saw how to add score, lives, damage, etc. You can pick any number of random numbers. You can make the likelihood of say death being less likely by having a range. You could pick a random number between 1 and 100. And if it's within the first 50, it's points. And with the next 60, it's whatever. So you get to figure out how you're going to do it. I'm going to let you implement it and have fun with the mystery one. Before I finish, there's one last thing we want to do. And that is go back to our create on the object pickup. And we need to make sure that the random pickup is now set to I random range back here again. And now when we run it, we should be able to see all of our random pickup items. And let's finish with me just running through here as I add to score and I do other kinds of fun things. Look at that, extra lives, great, this is good. Oh, I died, oh, I lost another, oh, and another life, and my health is down and now it's up and you get the idea. All right, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more. We're almost done.